Hey everyone, in this lesson we will discuss logical view or abstract view of Q data structure. Basically, when we talk about abstraction, we don't go over implementation details. We generally discuss about features and operations. In actual practice, Q is a structure in which whatever goes in first comes out first. So in general, Q is a FIFO structure. Whatever goes first, it should go out first. So if we want to construct Q as a data structure, then we need to support both insertion as well as deletion in the Q. In Q, as we need to maintain FIFO property, so both removal as well as insertion should happen from different end. It means if insertion happens in the front, then deletion should happen from the end and vice versa. Let's take an example to understand this thing. Let's say this is the snapshot of the Q at some particular time. Let's say this is the snap snapshot of the Q. And this is the front element of the Q and this is the last element of the Q or you can see as rear element of the Q. Now, uh, so as we can see here that if we want to make an insertion, it should happen at the end of the queue, which we call as a rear or tail of the queue. Likewise, deletion should happen from the start of the queue, which we call front of the queue. As if I want to delete some element, it should be even because this element entered first into the queue as and if I want to insert some element it should insert here so this is the snapshot of a queue at some particular time okay so uh, so was what we have seen here q as a abstract data structure a list or collection with the restriction that insertion can be performed at one end that is the rear of the queue and deletion can be performed at other end that we can say here as the front of the queue Let's discuss operations in the queue now. If we want to create a queue, what sort of operations that we need to support? The first operation is insertion, which we call NQ in the terms of a queue. Or uh, we can also say it as push operation. We need to push an element into the queue. And also one other operation that we need to support, that is the DQ where we need to remove an element from the queue or pop an element from the queue. Now, if I want to create an interface for the queue, how it, how it will be like? Let's discuss about that. If I want to create an interface for the queue, it will be something like I need to support these functions. The first function is an queue, which supports insertion. And the second operation is DQ. And here I'm assuming that uh, Q is maintaining integer elements, but it can be of any type. Okay. And the DQ operation means delete an element from the Q. And, and where this return type symbolizes the element that I deleted. It, it's, it solely depends upon the implementation that whether we want to return that element or not. We can keep it as void as well. That depends upon the implementation. Also, what sort of other things that we may need from the queue? That what is the element which is present at the front? Or we can say it as peak. Is my queue empty or not? So these sort of operations that I may need in order to implement a queue. So what we can say that in high level terms, these sort of operations that we need to figure out in order to implement queue. And most of the languages has an inbuilt library which provides the interface, which may vary, vary from language to language. And as a developer, we don't need to worry about the implementation details and we can create a queue data structures with the help of available functions. As we, can, as we have seen here that the operations can be NQ, DQ, front is empty. Now, uh, now, what we can say also as Q as a container, which is open from both ends, as we have seen here that, that we are entering an element from this side and removing an element from this side. So it is actually an open container where element goes in from one end and element removes from other end. Now, uh, let's say we have this operation available in the library. Let's try to simulate Q. Okay. Uh, let's say in this starting we have an empty queue and we need to insert an element two into the queue that means uh, we as we have in libraries uh, then we can simply call an queue function of that library and 
we need and we can insert q in our two in our q so when we insert two it will come from here fine so now as we know that uh, we need to maintain two pointers or two variables which keeps track of which is my front element as well as which is my rear element so that the implementation becomes easy but so if we have only one element in the queue then both front and rear pointing to two fine now let's say we are inserting one more element into the queue that is five and it will go from the rear side from this side now as we now we need to update our front and rear let's say internally the library it's handling all those things now the rear reaches here and front remains here now let's say we have one more operation let's say somebody asks one more operation to insert three into the queue then the snapshot of the queue will be something like this where the rear is pointing here and front is pointing here now let's say somebody asked us to dq an element that means delete an element as we know that deletion occurs from other end from this opening of the container so then our front got updated to five and the rear will be three so let's now we have done the simulation part uh, and we have seen and the queue that how it is actually in the in a high level way actually now let's discuss some real world examples uh, to understand it better and it is generally used when there is a real world when there is a shared resource that's supposed to serve some request and the source can handle one request at one time in such scenarios it makes more sense to queue up the request and the request that comes first serves first let's consider an example let's say we have a printer that is being shared across the network and it can print only one document at at a time when more than one request comes to it it cannot say that i cannot serve your request so what printer will do it will maintain a queue of request and serves them one by one as long as there is a request in a queue it, it will keep picking up the request one by one let's say we have a printer and all these computer they are requesting to the printer for the request to print a document but the printer can only print one document at a time so what the printer will do it will maintain a queue and store all the request into the queue and what it will do now after serving a request it will pick an element from the front of the queue and serve that request in this way it will manage everything so this is one of the real world scenario where we can use queue this is good for the introduction part of the queue in the next lesson we will see how we can implement queue thanks